How's it going? Welcome back. It's your favorite apostates. Shut up. I'm McKay. I'm Jordan. Just in case you have forgotten, because it is possible that you haven't seen our faces in a long time. It is very possible. And there are reasons for that. There are reasons yeah. for that. To give you the short version of what has been going down with us. My life fucking imploded. <laughs> That's the short version. It has been a hell of a, uh, basically about a month and a half now since the last time that we saw everybody. Um, as far as episodes go. Uh, let's see, Jordan injured her tailbone. I broke my tailbone. Everybody died. Family drama. More people died. I find out family secrets that I was not privy to that fucked me up even more than I already thought I was. So if you want the details, I go into explicit detail on our Patreon and additionally for YouTube channel members. Yeah. I like to maintain some semblance of privacy, so I'm not sharing everything with everyone. And I know that I can only control that to a certain extent. However, that is why yeah. it is there. There's a little update for everybody. So if you're It is interested. an hour long. I talk for an hour, which isn't surprising to you if you've been here before. So check that out if that's something you would like. There's all kinds of extra stuff if you are a member or you're a patron. Shout it's out true. to the members and the patrons. You're all awesome. We love you. You have kept us afloat. So if you have not abandoned us in our time of need, then we are so grateful for you. If you are hopping on now to support us, we are so grateful for you. Yeah. I am almost done with grad school. Even the 11th hour inside. workers get paid Thank the same. You. Don't worry. <laughs> we are we're barely keeping our heads above water. Jordan can at least sit in a chair now, so we'll be able to do stuff periodically when we are able to. So, Just know that things are going to return to normal here in about two-ish months. Yes, when we are settled in, in a new place that's not here in Utah. So there's your little announcement. You can speculate More about wildly that on the Patreon. Speculate wildly in the comments if you like. Anyway, we got that out of the way. One last thing we got to get out of the way is today's awesome sponsor, who's always been so awesome to us, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is the leading adult toy company in the USA with more than 50 years that they have built up a reputation as a trusted and reliable adult store that takes pleasure and privacy seriously. Their shipping is always discreet, so you don't have to worry about things uh, going missing when they get delivered to your doorstep. Or snoopy neighbors. Yeah, snoopy neighbors who might get jealous of the deals that you've gotten. If you're looking to fight purity culture, shame culture, all the toxic stuff that goes with that, and you're in the process maybe of even deconstructing, then adamandeve.com has a great deal for you. So you heard that right. Adamandeve.com right now. Use code Jordan. That's me. Jordan50. 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 You can see it on the screen. And you get 50% off one item and... Free shipping. Free shipping freaking awesome deal anywhere in the u.s and canada as usual with exclusions apply adam and eve has not only been really awesome to us but they're really awesome to everybody and you can help be a part of the difference that they make because 20 percent of their profits goes to helping fight the spread of hiv around the world so you get an awesome purchase and you can feel good about your awesome purchase so again Thank you to Adam and Eve for sponsoring our video and we appreciate them. And remember to use the code Jordan 50. So thank you to Adam and Eve. Love yeah. them, love them and always love them. So shout out. But anyway, we're going to get in, get onto it. Uh, we're going to be slowly working toward a bunch of the shit that we missed out this entire past little while that we've been absent i mean there was a whole sec ruling on the mormon church and they had to pay millions of dollars in fines because they used shell companies to hide their gains not great yeah that's just one of the things that comes to, <laughs> to mind when we, uh, do that. but uh yeah anyway today we're going to be talking about sherry frankie actually 
Today we are returning to the topic, the very hot topic generally um, of a passenger slash morphed into connections cult ching. And we have had a recent update <laughs> regarding the family drama of eight passengers. We have plenty of older videos to catch you up on what is going on with eight passengers if you are confused. So backtrack to those videos if you don't know what's going on. Those of you that do know what's going on, the family drama continues. And this time we have like a break in the case because one of the people in the situation themselves. We have a defector. We have a defector has spoken out. So Sherry Frankie did a podcast where she discussed some things related to the family drama situation. So we are going to react to that podcast with you today so you get to hear it and hear what she says. And I have not heard all of it, but there were some enlightening things that I have heard. So that's what we're going to do today, bearing in mind that there has not been much changes, like much change with connections since I have looked last. They are still posting consistently on their Instagram. They still have regular videos coming out. They're, as far as family drama goes, Ellie and Jared just, um, who have another YouTube channel connected to this whole Griffiths monster vlogger yeah, universe. Yeah, the little bio then. <laughs> um, Ellie and Jared just had their baby blessed in the Mormon church, and that is traditionally a very family-focused event where everybody comes from out of town and comes from their different churches to come to your local church and be part of the baby blessing. Yeah. Well, none... For all intents and purposes, it's kind of like getting your baby christened. It's true. But and the Mormon style. McKay will put the picture up on the screen. The only Frankies that attended this event was Sherry. You can see her there in the back right corner on the stairs. She is the only one that attended. And if that was not enough, the thing that everybody had already been thinking was mentioned in the comments when someone said Sherry was the only one that came from her family, question mark, to which Ellie replied, it's not our story to tell, and it's very sensitive and emotional. They were not here, but we are grateful for those who came. So it sounds like there's still trouble going on there, and happy late birthday to Sherry because she just turned 20 a few weeks ago. Way to go on completing 20 trips around the sun. Love that. <laughs> so yeah, um, this comes from, she went on this podcast, it's called Into the Light, of the subtitle which they use in their branding on like, in, or their Instagram handle is Doctrine and Covenants 24, or 50, 24, um, which reads, just to give you guys some uh, context as to what's going on here, and then I'll read the bio. That which is of God is light, and he that receiveth light and continueth in God receiveth more light, and that light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day. So, wow, um, a positive thing. Very riveting stuff from that. Um, but the podcast, if you are interested in checking it out, our names are Braylin, Drew, and Aaron Stanger, which is, I feel like... I thought I knew this person, Aaron Stanger, for a second, just because I know two people who complete that name, but I, I don't know this guy at all. Anyway, uh, and we created this podcast to share stories of empowerment and clarity regarding the gray area around sexual topics, mental health in the modern culture within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're so happy you're joining us in this quest for more open and meaningful conversations. I don't think you're happy about us joining you, if I were to guess. Probably not. <laughs> um, if they're progmos, call me when you leave in a few years. Yeah. Obviously, okay. we do have some preconceived notions about progressive Mormons, which these people seem to fall into the category of. Um, generally speaking, and which our bias has been confirmed by some of the people that we have talked about, if you identify as a progressive Mormon, it's because you are have an outward movement so or that's not everybody but uh it is definitely where i hope everybody to be because i think if you are and this is going to sting a little bit if you're a progressive mormon and that's your destination then you are just settling for mediocrity in my opinion 
you're settling for um lukewarm opinions and beliefs and you're hoping that something else is going to change and you're just going to stay where you're at that's just me let's get into it anyway let's get into this um there's not really anything to put on the screen for the viewers so i have a vis visualizer rigged up and if not that then maybe we'll do like some kinetic sand videos or something like is popular on tiktok love that shit <laughs> um We're just to that. put something up there but it's it feels kind of weird to just listen to audio i don't know anyway let's get into it hey y'all welcome back to into the light we have a special guest on our podcast today her name is sherry frankie and i'm gonna let aaron introduce her to us boy do we have an episode for you guys today <laughs> <laughs> we were just having a conversation off mic with sherry and wow we have so many things that we could talk about <laughs> we're going to keep this very gospel focused and gospel oriented and talk about the savior as we always do oh damn but sherry is someone that we've come to know she uh oh, oh. we're in trouble joe <laughs> nearby and is a part of our ward and is an awesome member of our ward and a great friend of ours so well, thanks thank for coming you. on Sherry. yeah thanks for having i'm me. assuming it's their I'm byu really ward. excited about this sherry is one of the like most happy people ever oh gosh she comes to church <laughs> she has a smile on her face and i'm like gosh i want some of what oh, she has I and she, i don't know that. what it is <laughs> she does have a yeah she has an awesome smile oh, um she uh she has been a part of the Eight Passengers YouTube channel in the past mm -hmm. um, that has a couple million subscribers, and she has her own YouTube channel. Follow her at Sherry Frankie. Oh, thank you for the shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the same on your Instagram, same handle? Um, it's official Sherry Frankie. Pause. At official Sherry Frankie. Okay. Sherry, they should be thanking you, girly. Real talk. <laughs> Like in this situation, you're the one with the clout. I, I, don't, mean, I don't mean to hate. It's everybody, just being real. everybody starts somewhere. We're not shitting on people with small platforms. We have a small no. platform, but like, girl, all the snarkers want to know, bro. Material girl. <laughs> one of her hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and Sherry goes to BYU studying yep. political science. Poli sci. Yeah, yeah we the were most getting into interesting that major too. in the world, if you ask me. Fascinating. Who is breathing? Yeah, fascinating. Dude, poli sci Who BYU is like a heavy and... breathing into the microphone? Dude, I am <laughs> not going to talk shit on that <laughs> at all. I live in a glass fucking house. <laughs> this is why I don't listen to things with AirPods. Don't listen to our shit with AirPods. You'll realize how awful it is. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, poli sci at BYU. Man, that shit goes hard. It's like <laughs> getting a... I don't even know. It 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 just seems like a, a strange. It's like situation. Liberty University, <laughs> Very except for psychology. Really, poli sci is a close second. What yeah. about <laughs> true chemistry rules the world? No. So <laughs> that makes me want to throw up. <laughs> Shout out to all of our stuff. Yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's, let's jump in. So Sherry Sherry's gonna. I mean, we're going to lead this conversation. Let's get the tea. Come on. He feels like it's best to talk about. So we might end up cutting some of this shit out. We're going to cut most of this out. I already know. Okay, cool. We always start out by talking about childhood and kind of how you grew up. Your family Bro, this is like a reverse Mormon story. It kind of is. <laughs> Give me the childhood trauma, Sherry. As far back as you remember, or as far back as you want to go, just kind of how you were raised. Okay. Um, and how was the gospel oriented yes. within your childhood? Yeah. Oh, can't okay, forget about so that. I am the oldest of six kids. And I was raised in Springville. I feel like we... <laughs> Springville. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Shout out yeah, Springville. Yeah, so I was raised in Springville. Um, oldest child. The church was always, like, we were very active growing up. Like, we went to church on Sundays. Um, when FHE was, like, still a... Like, FHE. I don't know. When the church was more, like, doing family home evening. I have an home. awful tidbit to s share about family home evening, mostly abbreviated... F H E. I remember I did that. I said that, or one of us kids said that to my dad. And he thought we spelled out an awful word. Oh. Di a, a three letter oh variant of a slur that starts with F. He was like, What? We're like, F H E. 
He's like, oh. <laughs> I have never made that realization. Oh, my God. You never heard that? No. <laughs> oh I've been saying God. F-H-E for... F-H-E, yeah. If you say it real fast, it's... Family, home, evening. Family, home, evening. But, yeah. it Sometimes it will sound like not that, so... Family home evening when Sherry and us were growing up was a day or a night every week that you would set aside some time to be as a family. And usually in my family that entailed like reading a thing out of the church magazine and teaching a lesson about it or watching a general conference talk that we had recorded or watching fear factor when i was younger <laughs> we called it fear factor family home evening ffh ffhe so my family just, did uh, it some like context 10 times <laughs> yeah but you weren't all mormons so my mom was very intense about it despite never doing it unsurprising unsurprising like family home evenings we had a little song we would sing like love at home we made up with some family home evening song that we would all Ooh. sing, and it was great. Um, we'd always try to read the scriptures together. With a big family, it was hard, because like, either wake up really early or you read really late at night. But like, we were always conscious about it and tried to do it. It didn't mm-hmm. always happen, but we were, we tried. We prayed before meals. Um, this sounds so yeah, like we my were family. All, like, very active in the church, loved the church. Pretty typical Utah family, I'd say. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> So what about you personally growing up? Were you, like, how was your relationship with the gospel, with God? Like, did you have a close relationship? Was it kind of just like, oh, my parents do this, my family does this? Like, how was that? Yeah, so I I loved, I think I've always loved the gospel. Um, When I was, like, eight, for some reason, I got, like, really obsessed with Joseph Smith and just read every book on him that I could because I was just, like, fascinated. I feel like we all go through a Joseph Smith phase. Dude, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm cringe like that. I remember on my t- my mission, I was like, "Dude, Joseph Smith is a great dude." I wish uh, what everybody said about us was right, and that we could v- worship Joseph Smith. Unironically, bro. Oh my god. Unironically. We are lost in the sauce. Imagine the context that I was missing in that moment to th- be able to think that. Read a bunch I, there of was books a about him after, also, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. But I also realized, like, thinking back on it now, when I was, like, five or six, I was scared to go to hell. Like, I don't know where that fear came from, but I was like, I'm you. so scared I'm going to be damned. And I think that, like, carried into my teenage years. So I was always worried about, like, wanting God to be happy with me. Mm, um, yeah. What's that the recipe for, my friends? I know you said you don't know where that came from, but if you... Scrupulosity. Scrupulosity. Hey. Hell yeah. I just fucked this up. Sorry, guys. Hey! Hey! Oh, man. I I think maybe part of it was just, like, my perfectionist mentality yeah. as, like, an mm-hmm. oldest child. Um, you felt like there was a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, and I probably put most of that on myself. Girl, no. I always just wanted to be, like, perfect in every way, and that applied spiritually as well. Mm, that's hard. I mean, what do we say on this shit? It creates these complexes of people who try to be perfect, even though it's... Mormon? It's not possible. Perfectionists? Never. Never ne- heard I've never of heard of that. That's really hard. So do you feel like, did you live the quote-unquote ideal... Standards? Like, Mormon upbringing? I, I feel like I did, yeah. Like, we went to church on Sundays, FHE, um... Like, we did sports, extracurricular stuff, like, mm-hmm. had family dinners together. Like, it was really chill. Yeah. Like, All we were, yeah. yeah. And you're, well, you grew up here in Utah. I always forget that. But your, like, friends were all Mormon and yeah. starting members. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> just, why I'm is that from funny? Utah, no. So it's just such a different thing. That's why. She grew up not in Utah, probably. Yeah. yeah. See, that's one of the things. They're like, oh, you're fr- you grew up in Utah. All your friends were Mormon. I'm like... That's a red flag for me, sending our kid to school. The Mormon people hang out with the Mormon people. The the majority. Cool. And then everybody else is an outcast. 
got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How was it? Uh, how was it growing up being on camera all the time? Because um, a lot, right? Yeah. I'm so I started in this. being on camera. I should remember the exact age. I was like 12, maybe 13 ish. Wonderful yeah. time for yeah. that. Um, Too young. I thought it was strange at first, honestly. I was like, this is weird. Like, we take a camera with us everywhere. <laughs> oh, was that, like, legit? Yeah, like, we took a camera when we'd go on vacation. Oh, get with the we'd fucking film, program. The store, we'd just, like, always kind of. Get with the fucking program. The dude, dude not- some people don't fucking realize that. And I don't think she's going to paint a picture as awful as well, it really is. Like, I'm just I thinking. I recently saw the. The thing where Ruby's like just walking around in the backyard talking to the camera, and then she goes, Oh my God! And there's a kid in the fucking window well. I'll have to throw it in there, but if I can find it. Oh my God. And she like lines the shot up. I just feel like if you're going to interview someone on your podcast, like do like a base amount of research. Like base. I don't know. Yeah, you don't have to be Sean Evans and Hot Ones. But. Yeah everything um but over the years like i i got used to it more it's like yeah this is like our job like this Um, is how we pay for vacations this is how we get to do fun stuff like you don't love it every day but you do it because it's work um (laughs) but even still to this day i get embarrassed to go and like film in public Mm -hmm. even though i've been doing it for like eight years yeah (laughs) i go out by myself i'm like Hiding the camera, <laughs> my stomach, and it's yeah. Dude, when I film in my car, I'm embarrassed, <laughs> and I have tinted windows. <laughs> Can't imagine in person or like out in the public. Does did that ever get hard? That's, like, what, she that's said. what she said. In the in the limelight, all yeah, the time. Yeah, it got hard, especially, especially growing up. Yeah, growing up. Um, I mean, junior high phase. Just, I don't think it was great for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I would not terrible. want my life on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I feel like as I got older, people got like meaner in the comments. Um, Uh Oh, she's calling us out. Call out. I'm not being, I'm not being mean to any of these kids of family vloggers. I'll be mean to your fucking mom. Yeah. (laughs) I got no problem doing that. Nope. They would say things like, oh, she's just a Molly Mormon. Like she's just going to grow up, become a baby making machine. Like. Wow. Oh my just because she's a member of the church. And so there was a lot of attack on At religion. 13? I wonder where they got yeah. that idea from. So that, like, there was a lot of attack on religion. Um, people made fun of me because, like, I took school seriously. And they were like, yeah. she needs a life. And okay, that's stupid. Um, that's dumb. It's like, I agree. I did need a life <laughs> <laughs> besides school. but Yeah, but it was not helpful. You had, like, bully. Like, people have, like, the typical bully and, like, the right. person making fun but of you But it was, like, school. strangers. Strangers who internet. are grown adults. Yeah. How did, how did that affect you as a young kid? Um, I found myself, like, I would tell myself, it doesn't matter what they say. Like, I know how I feel about myself. And I think I believed that for a while. Yeah. But I always would find myself just, like, checking comments on Instagram, on YouTube, just to see what people had said about me. Yeah. That um, is not a good place for a developing child to be, mm-mm. like, at all this is why this is so fucked up because her mom threw her into this when she was 12 13 years old like and she's talking about how it's a job and like she's not collecting no, you should not fees on that yeah there's there should not be something like that you know the last time fuck unless it's like a farm situation and you guys live off of yeah then maybe i could see it being different but being in the public eye for money that's and you're not prepped to get, I don't know that you're ever prepped to get hate like that, but you're never prepped to get hate like that as a teenager yeah. or a pre-teenager. Like, you I don't even... You have enough troubles with the people that are around you. When's the last time I checked YouTube comments? Couldn't even fucking tell you. But it doesn't get to me anymore after fucking TikTok. So, Real talk. Real talk. And that's a choice that we made, fully recognizing yeah. that that's what we were getting into. She didn't get to make that choice. That choice yeah, was no. made for her. She didn't have any say in this. Yeah, her mom just started sticking the cam- taking the camera everywhere. Mm-hmm. Or bad, you feel yeah. like it was yeah. okay. Because I, I just wanted to like be aware of what people were saying, I guess. And that probably got to like an unhealthy point where I was just checking all the time. And even through college, sometimes I've had to just like check and check and check. And really? Yeah. So luckily, I'm like breaking that habit. Mm-hmm. 
which is nice. That's but, hell yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Well, I just think about how mid- in middle school, like Instagram and Snapchat and like all those things were very much like, oh, this is like the cool thing to do. Oh, yeah, but like that the was... dog filters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was like, the oh, it's like social filter. media, right? Yeah. But like you were in social media versus yeah. watching it right. from like a middle schooler's perspective. You were yeah. a quote unquote influencer before influencers were really that. A thing. Pretty like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you are cool, Sherry. <laughs> That's why we love talking with you. I would she? I would be interested to see if she would greener, choose right? this again. <laughs> For real? Because she never had a choice to begin with. But I would be really interested to see if, like, if she could force Ruby to not get involved in this space, if she would choose to redo all of this. Yeah. Because she basically has to like reforge her own online persona. Mm-hmm. Because it will all, for a long time at least, it will be Sherry from Eight Passengers mm-hmm. with the crazy mom yep. or something like that. Um, okay, so growing up, you were very Mr. active. Worldwide dad. Your Mr. own Worldwide. personal relationship with God was pretty strong, you mm-hmm. would say. Um, and then you graduate high school and then you go to BYU. Yep. Okay. The Lord's University. <laughs> so how did you feel like... Because I think it's a pretty natural thing for everybody when you're young to have a pretty immature, I don't know if immature is the right word, but just like an undeveloped sense of who God is, Mm -hmm. what your relationship to him looks like. Yeah. What did the journey to, I guess, spiritual maturity look like for you? Yeah. So like I said, like very young, I was like, I I knew God loved me and I loved him, but I was like scared of him. Mm -hmm. I was like, he could strike me down with a lightning bolt. Mm, Like (laughs) he could... Yeah. Um, So I, you know, I said my prayers, um, but viewed him as like a, just like a separate entity that was like one day, like I'll be able to get to that point where I can talk with him and know him. And, um, and then that doesn't really sound like a loving heavenly father. If you ask me, no, I was terrified of him. Can you imagine I like labeling somebody as loving, but you're terrified to talk to them for like an entire season of your life. Like, God of justice. Yeah. That's uh, that's one of those things that gets me where they have like all these conflicting descriptions of what God is. I'm like, if you guys were less like absolutionist about stuff like that, it would be less off-putting. But being like, he's a God of justice and he will come down with swiftness and then also say he's a loving God, like a loving father. Miss me. Junior high, I kind of, let's see. Junior high, I kind of started to like read the scriptures a little bit more. When I got to high school, I switched to a private school um, and was around better influences, I think. and the teachers were able to bring the gospel into lessons. And so that really just like cultivated a sense of mm. what private school. I, they yeah, I to? don't know. Or is she talking about, I mean, I get, it's not seminary if she went to a private school. No. Well, Ruby had a meltdown get, before about public school, then turned to private and now does homeschool. Progression. <laughs> Backwards. The pres- progression of a Karen. Mm-hmm excited to study the gospel and then um as i would read the scriptures i would find myself um especially i mean when everything with my family started happening and we can talk about that later no um, i would find myself wanting to believe like god is (laughs) kind and merciful and but then i'd say well that's just like the sinful part of me that's lying to myself trying to make me feel like i'm okay but i'm actually not early go to therapy like no like maybe god is actually good Mm -hmm. and kind and then i'd be like no i'm just lying to myself that's not how it is because oh. i'm gonna if i believe that then i'll become complacent and i'll yeah mess up i wonder who put that stuff. idea in see that's head. interesting because right. as missionaries i don't this- feel like the uh believing and loving god should be that difficult or confusing that's only just in mormonism me. that's do just you, me. maybe not only in mormonism but only in toxic religion do you start to think man there is a omnipotent being that loves me and cares for me and then immediately gaslights yourself into no that's not true that's modern religion right there for you that's high demand religion the principle we teach is god is our loving heavenly father yeah and he's a dad who loves you yeah and wants the best for you and obviously 
wants to protect you and the way he does that is through commandments and so it's it's interesting to see that that was not how you interpret it in your head yeah and i i am i'm under the personal belief that most spiritual i agree probably emotional problems that we face in today's world come from a misunderstanding of who god is yeah definitely a misunderstanding his character character. yeah exactly how do you i just had an awesome question and it just completely left me because it was was never i I think what you said reminded me of like the difference between complacency and contentment right Mm -hmm. you can be content with who you are you can be content that god loves you no matter what while also not being complacent right being complacent like the apathy isn't something that we want exactly but you want to be content what is what is the uh that looks like titties (laughs) (laughs) great now we're gonna have to cut the feed on this one oh man (laughs) I I feel like I missed the bridge between complacency and apathy. Like this just sounds like a fucking it conference sounds like talk to me. Buzzwords. I'm just to me listening for because getting complacent tea. on where you're at with your relationship or who you are. I don't understand how that produces apathy. Like apathy of the relationship that you have with God. Give or... me the tea. <laughs> we'll move on. So. On the Into the Light podcast, as you know, we talk a lot about trials mm-hmm. and things that people have overcome. Oh, here we so go. you've had your fair share Let's see your, of trials let's hear it. in your life. When did all that start and how has it affected you? Yeah, so... It started with my I mom and my dad. Grade, so I was like 15. Um, my family joined a group. Um, here we go. Like a mental health kind of like this a... This is what we're here for. Self-help group, basically. Um, cause we wanted to, you know, grow closer as a family. We wanted each of us individually to become more like self-sufficient and, growth you know, oriented. yeah, like growth oriented. Um, and so we started in this group. It's um, fucking, it's fucking insane to me to think that, um, they're in the Mormon church. They all grew up in the Mormon church, a church that is so family centric and focused on constant progression and upholding of commandments why do you and they were like we need more i don't to me that gives like ruby and kevin are you guys have issues perfectionist like yeah never enough tendencies yeah because i mean it is high demand in a lot of areas of the world they are encouraging people to go to the temple on a monthly basis and Many people do it more often than that, especially if you're like a temple worker, you're retired or something like that. There are people who will be in the temple every day. We're getting sidetracked. Anyway. And I think it was great at first. On. Like we were um, Track. learning like a new, like learning lingo for stuff. And we were able to communicate in ways lingo. that we understood each other. Um, and then... You know, when we interact with other people and we use the same language, like they were very confused. They were yeah, like, I don't yeah. understand what you're saying. Like us, every um, fucking video. What is truth? What is distortion? What is capital T? What is lowercase T? I'm getting yeah. T Rama from having to listen T-rama. to the shit. <laughs> well, you as you listen to her talk about this, see how that could be applicable to Mormonism because I already had just in this little bit, had to explain what FHE is. That's so. true. And so in a sense, I feel like that brought us closer as a family because we like, we knew what the other person, how they thought. We knew like how we could communicate with each we other. We could control each other. Um, sort of esotericism or something. And then as like the years progressed, um, this group became more extreme. And you they think? began to equate like their curriculum and their teachings kind of with the gospel in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so at first it wasn't with the gospel. Um, I'm not sure. I just, I don't know. We have that book. We've never bought I never it. remembered that. Maybe mm-hmm. they said We should it take a look forgot. because uh, somebody, a follower, shout out to them. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. Used to work for Homie and the Homie people were all about connections and journey so we have a manual from connections. yeah we have a connections manual that they were given to uh they were given by their bosses it was like a which is fucking weird thing. Yeah. yeah but um what did you what do you feel like what was the thing that made you become more aware that they were equating it um 
Um, I think when they started like talking about God while they were also talking about their same curriculum yeah. and stuff. Self-help, yeah. growth, yeah. got it. And so I was like, oh, well, the gospel and this go together. Like, if I live this curriculum well, then I'll be a better church member um, and vice versa. Oh. So. Interesting. Yeah. I'm telling you, this sounds this exactly like what people go through when they convert to the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. Con convert? Did I say convert? I don't know. Convert to the Mormon church. Life coaching is a very controversial space right now in the mental health field. Yes. Because Facts. there's low accountability. There's very low accountability. You don't need a license to become who's like this guy? No state certification. No. Buy him a root beer for life coaching, and so you have to be very, very, very careful and research very deeply if you turn to life coaching. My man and really Sherry. Let's fucking girl. Go. I am so proud of you. No accountability. You're goddamn right. You're goddamn right. This should not be a thing. This should not be a thing. Look at the trauma that this has caused. Look at the For fucking people real, that Jody has impacted with her fucking nonsense. She's tore this fucking family apart with Ruby's help. And she knows better. And she, she fucking has knows been, better. She has been instructed better. Her dog could become a life coach and say yep. they're a quote unquote certified life coach. Versus therapy, which is, I don't, I don't know. Like therapy, therapy counselors, you need a license, you need, you need a degree. A degree. Okay. Which we will remind you, yeah. Jody's license was suspended and she was formally disciplined. Formally disciplined because she broke confidentiality to tattle on her clients, her client to the honor code office for or her, his bishop for uh, viewing pornography. So, real talk. She's a snake in the grass. Really intense licensure exam and tons. And of then you're also hours. under the board, like the Utah like doppel where it's like yeah. you can file a complaint they can take away your license oh dude girl she, she knows the fucking, fucking she acronym knows the oh my god she they've reported exactly jody she definitely has doppel suspended revoked. yeah like, interesting they didn't know that it's okay very, it's a very state run it makes it a lot more secure and safe for sure yeah and there's also there's very many great life coaches out there oh like, yeah there's a like you can you can find awesome people that way but you also have to be very careful but there's also crap. I guess I just don't know this, but there's also licensed therapists and people who are very well written that are not great. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, just do your like, research the same on thing whoever you go to see. Okay. Yeah. Jordan Peterson. Just, Jordan Peterson. I'm just yeah. Jordan Peterson. Stay on the same page. <laughs> as far as credibility goes, definitely therapists and okay. counselors have more official so credentials. So this was but, a life coach group. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. So how did you feel about 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 it? Like Yeah, so I I remember going into it and one of the people had said to me like I don't think you have a lot of like empathy for other people and a lot of compassion for other people. Like towards you individually. Yeah. And so I was like to okay, which like I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. And so I would say I would say shut the fuck up. Right. How's that for empathy? Every night, there you like, go. Heavenly Father, like, why don't I have empathy? Like, Aww. please help me to, like, have it. And, I mean, obviously, This I, is based on one person's, everyone. like, subjective observation. <gasps> and that sent her to a spiral. I feel so bad, honestly. So bad, huh? People in that situation. And what, were they, like, put up to it by someone else? Like, who just says something like that? I don't think you have a lot of empathy. You're right. Go fuck yourself. You know, like my Jordan therapist said. have never said that. And yeah. that's like part of my job is to be like, let's talk about empathy. I've never said that to somebody. Yeah. That's like so fucked. Empathy, I think. But I don't think I was like cold. deprived of yeah. empathy. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Cold hearted. Yeah. So you I don't like, get Cherry. You yeah. don't think she's cold hearted. No. So I, so Unempathetic I, is the first <laughs> word. That comes to my Just kidding. <laughs> it's so, like the last thing. Oh, man. So I look back at like a lot of the things that I prayed for at that age and I like feel bad for myself that mm -hmm. I was like so concerned with like help me be clean. Help me be empathetic. Like I don't know what to do. And then I feel like I would work on it and then I would go and talk with these people and they'd say, you're still not getting it. Mm -hmm. And I would just like lose my mind over like, what else am I supposed to do? Like, what was I'm the guessing benchmark? she's referring to Jody. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, I don't know. So like every week we would keep track of like, 
how many times you used black and white thinking, how many times you like denigrated yourself. How many, and so it was like a very what did she just like say? I was always focused on the negative things that I was doing. Denigrate yourself. Is that what they termed it? You guys, this is so bad. This is so vindicating to hear it. And we've been speculating a lot of this shit for months now. And then to hear her tell us that shit, it's like, oh, it's sweet fucking. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but sorry, um, Sherry. And had to Yeah, obviously not great. And so I started to notice those things in like other people as well. Um, so like... I could I would look at somebody and say your eyes look dark. <gasps> like, you've probably you're hiding something. You're mm, and I still find yeah. myself to this day sometimes. Dude, it's a I straight that's straight cult tactic. You just get people to tattle on each other. Darkness. You know who else did that? You know who else said people had darkness in their eyes? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. And you know what they did? Yeah, they Don't fucking say it. murdered their children. Don't. Her children, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's about people, and I'm like, crap. No, I don't want to do that. So it's like it's taken a lot of work, and still is to like undo that kind of like snap judgment mentality. That's me with garment checking. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's whiteness under your shirt. Um, (laughs) How do you? So how long were you, I guess, actively involved in this before you decided to? Yeah. So. I was in 10th grade when I joined, and then... Joined. I guess, sorry to interrupt, if, if you feel comfortable yeah. saying, what is the joining yeah. process? Yeah, like, like, do you what have does to sign up? It's, yeah, so the joining process for it, like, you can pay for, like, workbooks online. They have, like, weekly conferences you can join. You can do, like, one-on-one sessions with um, the main life coach. <laughs> Um, do you pay like it doesn't this is like a, it's literally Mormonism meets Scientology the parallels <laughs> but again you can I mean you take this Bizarre. lens and you apply it to oh how do you join oh I just have to like agree to a bunch of stuff um, they dunk me in some water they put their hands on my head and then I have to perpetually pay 10% of my income or else I'm in sin but this is like do you meet with the like next thing we know, Jody's yeah. gonna be getting what are those the little fucking e meter? Yeah, <laughs> do some auditing. Baby. How many times did you denigrate? How many times? Yeah, how many times did you use black and white thinking? <laughs> oh, I didn't do it at all this week. Mm, That's I'm black and white my thinking. That's black. <laughs> my meter is saying at least ten. <laughs> Two and a half hours later, they finally admit to eleven instances. <laughs> Pain to get in. So yeah. Um, but they also do like social media stuff and some people just look at that and they're like, yeah, this is great. Um, like I don't. Life coaching yeah. company. Yeah. yeah. So bored with all of it. And then I came to college and I, oh. I mean, high school is like a bubble within a bubble. Isn't it interesting how a, a change of scenery can really just, uh, force that paradigm to shift well and even it's not like she went to like some liberal bird Dude, she university. literally yeah went down the fucking street she literally went to <laughs> the mormon Lord indoctrination university. central yeah bubble and then <laughs> yeah i broke out of one of those bubbles when i came to byu still in some bubbles but less um so i started to like interacting with roommates and people that I hadn't met. I was very judgmental. I was like, wow, she's wearing that. Like she's going to hell. Mm -hmm. Wow. She's wearing that. God's so mad at her. Or so like, I was still very like judgmental about people like that. And I would take religion classes and they would talk about, you know, God is so gracious and kind. And I'd say, well, they've got it wrong. And Mm -hmm. so I, I was just very like critical about the world. And then I think, like some things within my family were happening that I started to question, like, I don't know if this is okay. Like, I don't know if God would actually support this. Like, is this really the gospel? And so for a long time, for like seven months of my freshman year in college, I was just debating. I was like, I don't know what to believe. Mm. Like, I believe the gospel is true, but I don't know exactly what that gospel is. Yeah. Like, mm. I didn't know where to draw the line between life coaching. And yeah. Gospel. Like life coaching and the gospel. Um, 
And then I still remember one day, like I was praying. I was like, I need like a very clear indicator, like if I'm going down the wrong road or if I yeah. should change something in my life. And so I woke up one morning and I had the story of um, Jesus at the well with the woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and a saying stuck out to me that he said, he basically said like, you should worship God in spirit and in truth. Mm. And I was like, wow. Is that truth with a capital T? I was going to say, what kind of truth are we talking about? <laughs> is this big T truth or is little T truth? Mormon truth, Scientology truth, Jody truth, Ruby jo- truth. Joby truth. Joby truth. Like, I can't keep track. Whose truth is it? Joby truth. It, it's weird, and people don't only get like this because they get in, involved in some, like, extracurricular group. There are people like this and far worse um just through this standard shit that they teach because just because they don't exactly share all of the uh the beliefs and all of the viewpoints that have existed throughout history the history of mormonism in sunday school doesn't mean that they're still accessible they're not still accessible and floating around out there and there are people on twitter even who are like I think we really need to reassess the church's policy on the priesthood ban and how it's changed over the years because Brigham Young may have been right. Like, holy shit. It's crazy how bad this can get just by itself. But And then you add in some weird fucking cult coaching shit and it, it can do this have the same effect i didn't think much of it at first but it stayed with me for days and i looked at that like we should worship in spirit and in truth and i had just been doing one of those things and not the other and so at that point i was very convinced like this is too extreme i need to do something change something but i wasn't sure how Mm -hmm. um because you know, I want to honor my family. We're supposed to honor our parents. And I felt that to disagree with them was sinful. Um, Mind you, at this point of her life, she's an adult. So commonly held belief that even as adults, you respect your parents. Too. Like, I did that. Yeah. Authority. That's it. Yeah. Even You're you a whole ass adult and you are allowed to disagree with your parents and it's not going to if it breaks your relationship that's not on you honestly if they're offended i mean we talked about this when we were mormons like if they're offended that's their choice right that's why all the uh the ex-mormons are ex-mormon they got offended and that was their choice to be offended and whatever so it's crazy how this just ends up happening like that a hard paradigm because not even just like within the gospel but i would say people who are joining the church and their parents are catholic or baptist you know and they're going against the beliefs that their parents taught them their whole lives right i feel like it's it's pretty similar in that way um but how how do you think you kind of i guess mentally worked through that I honestly, I gave no indication that I disagreed with what was going on because I wanted to still be like included in things. Mm-hmm. Smart girl. Um, Smart. And so again, for those like whole seven months I was doubting whenever I'd go home, you know, it was like, oh, we use this language. We talk about things like this. And then I noticed like when I would leave my family, like I would just feel like spiritually drained. Like mm. I just wouldn't feel great. Yeah. Um, I would like overhear conversations and just like find myself internally like this isn't right like this isn't okay and so it got to the point where I was like I can't keep pretending like everything's fine yeah um yeah yeah so that's hard I, I think that what you said about spirit and truth is so powerful how do you feel like we were just talking about this actually in in last week's episode where to me, life is all about learning how to discern what the spirit feels like for you. Mm. Because if you're able to have the spirit with you in a consistent manner, you're going to make mostly good choices. Like yeah. you're going to, you're going to feel good. You can feel happy. Even in the sad times, you can have good perspective. How do you feel the spirit and how did that, 
how did you become aware of yeah so that was something like seminary lessons my favorite lessons were always like how can i tell when i'm feeling this spirit Mm -hmm. because i was a pretty anxious kid growing up um it's what i I feel like that shit it's kind of yeah (laughs) i can see why she would like those lessons because for someone who has trouble with ambiguous definitions which the feeling of the spirit in mormonism is the most ambiguous thing and it's supposed to vary from person to person but it feels like a burning in your chest but what the fuck does that even feel like so <laughs> i can see where that is and then you confirmation your by bi- confirmation bias your way you, you into confirmation thinking that that's your what's bias. happening you know yeah People well like, I, or other people track. will will do that i'm just trying to add some break it up a little bit sorry we do a lot of that sorry my anxiety or is this the spirit it's a great question yeah like (laughs) if this is like if i keep thinking about this then is it the spirit telling me i need to do something Mm, and so like that was a whole other struggle on top of it um so beast and it was hard especially because while i was involved in this group in high school like i felt the spirit very strongly a lot and i had some of my most powerful spiritual experiences during that and so as I was thinking about it, and I was like, well, is this right? I was like, well, I felt the spirit, so I must it must have been good. Yeah. Like, it must have been okay. Um, and so I struggled with that, and I didn't exactly know what to do. Um, but as I thought about it... Like, That's black and white thinking. Right. That was some of the, the thinking that led me out of Mormonism, because what I deemed the spirit that I felt all throughout my mission, I also heard listening to this band right here. <laughs> I was like... Um, I don't think that those things coincide. Jesus <laughs> are didn't supposed touch to your head at Hillsong. You just like going to concerts with loud music. Like, Real talk. Relax. And there's nothing wrong with that. Although, go to concerts with better music. Sorry. Respect. I think the spirit, in a way, was like preparing me to have the strength to be able to change and do something else and those like spiritual experiences leading up to it were like look at look at the gifts that you have and the things that you can do and so i knew that god was there and Mm -hmm. i think that was important um and now like i've been learning like i god loves us obviously he knows our weight our he knows knows our weight (laughs) (laughs) like god loves us he knows our strengths and our put away the scale god put put away the Put away the skill. Sometimes we count our blessings and sometimes we measure <laughs> that or we weigh them. So, And he knows that I sometimes have a hard time discerning the spirit. And so yeah. I've learned like he's not going to like give me some grand revelation when I'm anxious because yeah. he knows it'll be confusing. Yeah. And so that's a good point. He, he will like find that. the times that I am calm and happy. And those are the times that if he needs to tell me something that he'll be able to do it because he's not going to intentionally try to confuse Mm -hmm. like that's the adversary's (laughs) that's the adversary's job i don't know when he's like this is my people and you guys need to do this exactly the way that i say or else you're in bad favor with me and then he's like you know what i'm gonna re i'm gonna topple that law i'm gonna send some random guy and nobody knows who he is except for me he's my son and then he's gonna be like actually i'm the son of god and because of everything that i told them they're gonna kill him that sounds like the most straightforward plan i've ever heard in my entire life i don't ever i don't know anybody that's read the book of mormon and hasn't been confused at some point it's the most confusing it's so dry i've ever heard so dry shout out mark twain that is really cool i've never heard it like that i think that's important to know that Obviously, God knows who you are on a very deep personal level. He's going to talk to you in the way that is the most clear possible. It's kind of hard, though, because it's because like every single time. I hate this rhetoric, though, because it implies that if you don't understand that very niche, clear way that God is talking to you, then you're the problem. Yeah. You need to do more work to get people in that cycle. Yeah like a face-to-face for the church mm-hmm. there is like that question always comes up it's like mm-hmm. how do i know if it's my thoughts or the spirit and what do the general authorities always say if, if it's, it's a, a good, good thought, thought it doesn't matter do it right <laughs> but it sounds like from this life coaching <laughs> no wonder they never filter that question out because that's a fucking soft pitch 
a slow pitch softball right there. Just lob it over. Jesus. From this kind of way of life that you were trying to live, you were trying to live the best you could. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like, well, what does that mean, God? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what do does it that? mean? And it's, yeah, wow. <laughs> That's. Sure, you taught me something really powerful. Today. Thank you. <laughs> Do you feel like you started to become aware of that as you spent time with your family, then away from your family, that you were yeah. feeling the spirit more in, like, the calm? Yeah, yeah. And I had I had friends that would point out to me when I'd come home from my family. Bro, like, this is if you take this and apply it to Mormonism, it's the fuck. It's the same fucking story. <laughs> the same story. She's not ready for that yet. I know. Different, like. Mm you are going back to how you were in high school. Not that I was a terrible person in high school, but they're like, we can just see something I've like different I've heard that. About you. Mm, really? So like, I remember- Did you see that in yourself? I mean, looking back, I can. At the time, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but I remember the first general conference I watched like by myself. And it was the greatest general conference ever. Like I loved it. Yeah. I was like, this is so cool to just like watch by myself. Yeah. Like it was amazing. Sit in front of my TV so, on a weekend for ten just hours. Just kind of the more time I spent, people talk with myself and with God. I was like, okay, like this is how I want to feel all the time. Yeah. Oh, do you feel like? Do you feel like um, your ability to kind of love yourself as well as like see the positive in yourself increased as you did the things that you felt like you needed to do? Yeah, I think especially like. Even just the last few weeks, it's like looking back at, like I know, looking back, I know I was doing the best that I could. Yeah, like I was sure. praying, like God, please help me have empathy, like because I really cared and I wanted to do good things and I wanted to be a good person. And you know, when a couple months ago, a few months ago, started going to like therapy, and that Woo! definitely let's fucking to have, like, go an outside person, not tell me how to think, but be like this was wrong or like you're totally this okay to feel like this um and so that was like more of validating just how i how i thought because a lot of times i'd want to you know love myself and i'd yeah. want to but then i'd always be like no like i'm lying to myself i need to be hard on myself and and so to have someone else tell oh, me like oh, like it's okay to like love yourself real talk and i was like oh those thoughts had been there the whole time. I just yeah. never like took them seriously. So. Has there ever been like an intentional way to do that? Like how how do you like intentionally say, you know what, I'm doing great. Mm. You know what? Oh, oh, practical questions, Bray. That's, that's a awesome. good question. Um. Hmm. Because I I think this is a common thing among I think people our age because we're in this perfectionistic right like, age of college. Like we have to yes. be perfect, but also social media doesn't help yeah in having to be perfect and it's like gosh like i am really Covenants with the mark in the all the help. time I, I think that at least for me i think we tend to struggle with like the same sorts of sins mm. or temptations i think a lot of them are i agree kind of oriented the same way and so mm. for me when i get upset like i can't believe i did this i can't believe i'll look back at years prior and say well look at how far I've come from then. Mm -hmm. And not to say like, oh, well, what you've done now is okay, but say like, you're trying and look at how far you've come. And oh, therapy. about a year where I'll be. Hell yeah. Like, so looking back at, you know, past things and saying, I'm not the same person I was then. That's why she knows like, the I stuff about Doppel. Still. I think that's so. one of the most powerful exercises to yeah. look back. And it's something that we ask our guests quite frequently is like if you could go back when you're going through this extremely hard time and have a conversation with yourself or even just imagine that conversation how would you be viewing that person that you were five years ago yeah and every single time they're like be i'd just be or, feeling so merciful like so yeah. compassionate yeah. like you're gonna get through this right the future's brighter and the future in front of that's gonna be even brighter yeah i think we've reiterated this before on our podcast but i think it's been a while since we said it but Aaron taught me this really big principle a couple months ago that sometimes we don't want to share. Is that a principle of truth? Capital P. Principle. Truth. P principle. Deepest, darkest trials and secrets with people because we think it's going to change their perspective of them. But in reality, it's the complete opposite. Oh, and yeah. doing this podcast, it has helped us know more than anything that we have more respect. We have more 
like you are so strong you are so courageous for the individuals in our life because that's who we <laughs> interview the people you we go bestie all the time. and so it's very interesting to see that like when you're looking at yourself and you're like i'm the horrible person like this was a horrible part of my life you tell somebody else that and they're like holy smokes bro like that yeah. just gives me so much what are you doing you are as an individual now yeah those trials qualify you to help other people that are going through the same thing in the future that's what I'm my life. In my life. Good, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask because I feel like Bray's question was leading into what I was wanting to ask too because you have to have a lot of self-confidence and courage to be able to break away from something that you've held so near and dear to you yeah. for a long time mm-hmm. what did that look like for you back then mm. for me honestly the re- I think the reason it took me so long was because I didn't have like the widest support group like I, I'm not the most like social person. Um, all my friends from high school were on missions. Like they still are. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I'm like a freshman hey, in college. I'm 20. Wow, I didn't <laughs> know you were so young. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. When did you graduate high school? Two years ago. She has to be really mature. She uh, was raised by a camera <laughs> since she was 12. <laughs> Okay, keep going, sorry. Yeah, so for me, um, looking back, like God placed some people in my life, like really good mentors Uh. um, that were able to help me through it. Um, Really good bishops have been amazing. Um, I've been able to reconnect with like a family that I was friends with in high school and they've kind of taken me in as their own daughter. Uh, And so like I, I had like, I felt, Ow. Like I had them to go, um, to go to. It was hard to like not have my own family. Yeah. Um, and then to hear other people talking about their trials and say, "Well, my my parents were my rock. Like they were there for me." And yeah. I was like, "Man, um, wouldn't it be nice?" <laughs> yeah. But to have, I mean, God will always put people in your life. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, for sure. How did you come to that decision? To dude, can you Shade imagine at Ruby and Mister way- Worldwide? Can you imagine Jody molding over this? You know she's fucking furious. They're, Ruby is frothing at the mouth at this podcast. Dude, they are. They like are they're just, convulsing in truth over there. They're shitting, crying, pissing. throwing up, pissing their pants, <laughs> shaking in a corner, naked. In I truth. <laughs> in truth and principles. Jesus Christ. Just um, very condemning. Remove yourself from this situation. I don't think it was like I woke up one day and decided today is the day. Yeah. Um, Today's the day. But a lot of stuff happened in our family that almost kind of like did it for me. Oh, interesting. Which Ooh. was nice that yeah. like I didn't have to have, you know, the conversation of like I'm leaving. Yeah. Um, things just kind of happened that just like slowly kind of drifted and. So it was. It wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was going to be, yeah. which is nice. I'm guessing well, that was when I have always said they the split marriage up. fell apart. Well, yeah, when they went their separate ways. The president says this. He <laughs> says he. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I always I've say always this. said. <laughs> Actually, I mean, my, my mission, mission president. president. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said he says that God preserves people. Um for what he knows their potential to be. And I think that's so important because sometimes we don't see our own potential when we're in the depths of our trials. He definitely How did do preserve us to do this. How do you think you were able mm-hmm. to discern truth through this whole thing? I feel like I yeah. feel like that's I don't know if we've already asked that question, do no, we? No. Okay. Like what question. what is one thing what is one thing that you're like, this is truth? Or like I can understand that this is truth? Because you oh, sorry, I'm moving. Um <laughs> You, you were struggling with the whole anxiety versus the spirit thing, mm-hmm. right? And, like, for me, that is, like, how you decide truth. But right. when that's so cloudy, how are you going to find truth? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, like, I have always firmly believed, like, Jesus Christ is our Savior. Yeah. Like, I've always never doubted that once. But as I've gotten older, Savior has meant different things. Oh, and so being able to expand what that meaning is, like, that does mean merciful. And it means, mm. you know, he is just, but, mm. like... You know, to just, like, accept all these different identities that Christ has. Um, To read the scriptures and to trust my initial, like, insights that I had 
I had to just like learn to go with my gut more because the more I sat and thought about it, the more, you know, it sounds other like that's not helping you at all. It's just you. Previous ways of thinking would start to influence it. So it really is like to deconstruction, to my friend. And then something else I did was when I would pray. I don't know if this is bad to do, but I stopped saying like the, thy, thou, like yeah. I started to use like That's you. That's some hella progressive shit. Get it, girl. Kind of more like informal language in a way. Um, because he really, I mean, he's our heavenly father, but he also became. <laughs> Yo, God, what's good? It's your boy. <laughs> I stopped doing that at a certain point because it's just fucking ridiculous. Like it was. Yeah. I couldn't. I I was hung up on that shit. Like An I was all like, loving oh, God you need to, uh, does not care. You need to address. It is a, he's the King of King, the Lord of Lords, right? So you need to address him as such. And I would hate on people who didn't, like, okay. including Jordan. It was it's true. Rude. It's true. Honestly, a father in like a very real sense as well. Very mm. personal. Yeah, like a very like almost like an earthly father. Like I tell him about my day <laughs> and. He kind of no. turned from authoritative yes, to Mr. You. Worldwide yeah. is not doing his job. At all. <laughs> He's like my earthly father because my earthly father is a piece of shit. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm still stuck on the language thing. Sup? <laughs> we Philly D. <laughs> Sup, you beautiful bastard. <laughs> I felt gay. <laughs> personal yeah like, and so i feel like that boy, relationship yeah. like if i had no other friends in the world like that would have been enough mm. that's I powerful love that. that's powerful how Jesus would you what would you say to someone that's having doubts about whether the gospel is true yes tell oh, me man. oh i want to hear it that's like that's a, <laughs> that's a good question how would i answer that I'm I, like, that's good I would say don't say doubt your doubts. To, like trust yourself because the light of Christ is in all of us and our spirit obviously what wants is in us all of us <laughs> the truth of the gospel and I think it's always going Jesus is in all of us Jordan he has entered all of us Jesus better be using protection <laughs> I uh, yeah right he- whispering it to you and confirming it to you and so just trusting that i think is Mm -hmm. what that spirit has to say yeah it all comes down to having the spirit yeah that's literally the answer for everything has peace ever been an indicator for you of this is the spirit or this is not the spirit this is the way i the last few weeks it has for sure Mm. just you know as life calms down a bit it's like oh my gosh i can breathe like this is nice i like this like i wake up in the mornings i'm like oh life is so good we need Um, to get one of those like compilation videos of uh if you guys are chronically online there's this person on tiktok who will watch like the the car wheel rolling over shit and she'll say if things are swag or not swag we mm. need something like that but it's spirit or not spirit because (laughs) it is pretty fucking ambiguous i don't know i need a guide book as to what spirit. it is. Spirit, not, not spirit. spirit. Oh, that is spirit. That's spirit, spirit. for sure. Because uh, it's <sighs> very confusing. Idea. Very confusing. Yeah, so that piece is definitely something that I've been coming to feel more mm-hmm. of. Because I never had like really felt it before. And yeah. so, yeah, experiencing it more. And I think that's an important principle, too, is that the way that you feel the spirit can change over time. For sure. Mm. Like when I was in junior high and high school, I was like very intellectual. I read a lot. And so most of my like spiritual experiences honestly came from like reading books. Interesting. Like I read a lot of history oh, books, girly. a lot of like classics. No. You're so Sometimes close. a quote would just stick out to me. I was like, that is so profound. Because <laughs> um, yes. I think God knew that's like how I get her attention is she's always reading. So like <laughs> I'll just have somebody stick out to her from there. Um, but then as I've matured and been able to like sit with my own thoughts more, um, that's invited him to come in you know like direct interestingly enough that has come up around the same time that she's gone to therapy what he's welcome to enter we have a no we have a no trespassing sign sign. sorry jesus but no soliciting only real jesus mormon jesus sorry bro i know the door's not the doorbell's not gonna ring 
So, or I'm pretty confident at the very least. <laughs> We're too far gone. It's not a tell-all. No. But... I, d- I didn't expect it to be, because... I did not either. Um, I'm sure that, w- especially with where things are, it would just be very inflammatory. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. It sounds to me like... So. If I were to guess, based on the information that we have... Jody's shit got in between her and Kevin. Her and Kevin split. And that was around the time that Sherry was having the issues with it. So when her and Kevin split, then things kind of did fall apart, just like she said, and it wasn't yeah. as big of a deal. I would think so. But to still not have... Like, there's so much more to this. There's so much more to this because it's like... Yeah, I'm not going to be a part of this group anymore. But I don't think Kevin's a part of this group anymore either. And why isn't he talking to Sherry? Yeah, what's the deal there? Like, what's the problem there? Like, I'm confused. If he is still part of this, he's fucking lost it. Or, like, crazy. is there some other wild theory? Like, he cheated on Ruby. And then Jody was like, come here. Come hither. No, oh, gross. I'll fix Stop. it for you. <laughs> Stop. You don't need a man. You don't need a man. You ain't need no man. Or did Ruby cheat on Kevin with Joby? Judy. Jody. <laughs> Obviously, these are just wild speculations. We are wildly with speculating. No basis in reality. But they don't have reality. Yeah. You want to be so public about your life and then wonder why people speculate. I don't know. I'm waiting for know. Jody and Ruby to foam at the mouth in a video about this. Like maybe there's an upcoming Clearly they, video where they address this. It's like they have to they have to call in the flock and rein everything in and just in case the leaks are starting to form. Yeah. Well and it's just it's crazy. I feel really bad for Sherry. I do. I feel like she's Well, she's definitely been robbed of a family. She has, and the, which sucks. The family that she had to begin with was really hard on her, and you know, kind of encouraged and reinforced a lot of really toxic and harmful beliefs and principles and ways of living that she just kind of got it from all sides. Yeah. And then to have your whole family abandon you, like. Where the fuck is Chad? Like, why is she beefing? Like, why is Chad beefing with her? Why is Kevin beefing with her? Like, I'm just confused as to the split. Like, what's the split? Yeah. Why does she have to basically adopt a new family? Because if Kevin hates connections and thinks Ruby's gone off the deep end, I mean, wouldn't he be willing to side with Sherry on this? Yeah. And like, why can't Chad and Sherry really? And maybe they talk and we just don't know. I mean, we are just wildly (laughs) speculating, but... But she did make it sound like they were estranged at best. I mean, she made it sound like she doesn't talk to any of them. Yeah. So. And if she's the only one invited, not invited, but if she's the only one going to like Frankie family events and things, like it just seems kind of weird. It is weird. Like, wouldn't Kevin still be engaging with his family in theory? Like, why are they punishing both their families? But like, it's her family. Isn't, aren't Ellie and Jared? Ellie is ruby's sister right yes that's what i thought yes but even his parents i think there was some kind of thing that they didn't go to Mm -hmm. maybe i'm thinking of something else but could be no because she went to them for the holidays or something i don't remember that was too long ago for me to remember (laughs) anyway it just doesn't make any sense and i don't get it and i feel for her as a person who has an insane mother who is unwell it's a really hard position to be in. It's a lot of indoctrination to undo. So, yeah, I feel for her. It's it's some wild shit to hear about. Kind of the motivating factors behind all the that stuff that went down for them, sadly. But I will stand behind what I said earlier. Anything that she was talking about with connections. Take that out and drop in the Mormon church and Mormonism. 
still applies. It's basically the same story, honestly. Um, we a lot of the same things that she was talking about with having to cut her family off and leaving all that was a lot of the same situations that were happening to us when we left the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. So we're glad that she's out of a system that's even more high demand and stuff. And she's into a more progmo position. Obviously we, that's a tough place to be because um, there's a lot of reconciliation that has to happen with what the church believes. And, um, the government of the church is not so flexible as the, some of the members are. Anyway, hopefully they did construction continues and they she doesn't feel like that she has to go to a church that does not support um, LGBTQ people or... We wish her the best. Uh, ...has racism written into the doctrine, but we definitely wish her the best. Um, we didn't want to... We cut it off early. There was a lot of just Mormonism talk, and we didn't want to spend the whole time railing on Mormonism as a response. It was more just to we uh, do that enough. be informed about what's going on um, in that situation. And again, to feel vindicated that we've been saying all these things about connections, and then Sherry hops on and gives us the full fucking, I mean, not like the full story, but pretty clear picture as to confirmation uh, how that, of a lot of that yeah how that was panning out so it's good to feel that way joe jody and ruby they still suck big old booty stanky booty <laughs> and they sh definitely deserve each other in the absolute worst way so mm -hmm. hopefully maybe they can wake up too and quit being fucking awful because Ruby's family has paid dearly because of it, and I'm sure that Ruby's family is not the only one. Uh -uh. Anyway, uh, suck eggs to them. You guys are fucking gross. The rest of you, we love you. You're not. Welcome gross. back. You're not gross. You're amazing. Not You're you guys. Didn't mean you guys. Not you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. We love you. You're deserving of love from everybody. So don't feel like um, that you aren't. Especially if you're subscribed. <laughs> Do a little segue to finish this out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's right down below us. If you're listening, you can download our podcast. That helps us out as well. It keeps the numbers going. Additionally, if you would like to further support us, consider joining the Patreon or becoming a member of the channel, you can become a member right down below. Uh, it's next to the subscribe button, that's pretty awesome. Same benefits either way. We're uh, trying to do extra stuff because we've been absent for so long, uh, but you can check out the benefits. YouTube has a little bit of an edge because it's integrated into the platform, in the comments, in the chat, and stuff like that. You get a little badge that denotes your membership, which is pretty cool if you ask me. You can also check out our merch. We have awesome t-shirts and stuff that's down in the description on our fourth wall. So that's pretty cool. We also have, you can follow us on Instagram and Jordan is tempting the cat to interrupt. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Jordan and McKay to find some more stuff. Who knows how much longer TikTok will be around, but you know, whatever. And you can join our awesome Discord. The invite link is down in the description. Awesome community, amazing people. More uh, ex-Mormons, never Mormons. No active Mormons, probably not, unless they're lurking. But uh, anyway, we love you. Baloney loves you. And uh, we will talk to you soon.